What's up everyone, Michael Heath with Get Automating, another nugget. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our friends again. That is our friends in the people picker, bringing that people data into Power Apps. This time, we're talking about bringing it in from Dataverse. As you recall, in our last video, we looked at how we can take that people information pipe it through to Power Apps. So we get our names of our 365 users in our dropdown. Today, we're gonna to do something very similar, but getting that data from Power Apps into Dataverse, it's gonna be wild. I've got friends in low code places. Get on, matey. Enhancing humans daily. All right, so in the previous episode, we walked through a little bit of the nuances on how to use a column of person type in SharePoint, get that over to Power Apps, and then have our drop down look and feel correct to the end users. Now we're going to walk through that similar scenario, but this time we're going to connect our 365 users list to our Power App, but then send that information off to Dataverse. So there's a little bit of differences and we're gonna talk about those right now. All right, so here we are in the certification tracker SharePoint list. If you recall, we have a cert name title, a column of person type, email, which we're pulling in with that JSON, and then a, a simple choice field. Now, when we come over here to our Dataverse table, things are a little bit different. Right? We do have our cert name title, but our name is a title. Why? Well, we can't necessarily point this to our 365 list like we can in SharePoint. So we can do a lookup, but it's only going to be our Dataverse users, and sometimes that's not entirely helpful. So we have our other fields here like email and tracking status, and those pretty much can map the same way other than utilizing our JSON script because we don't have that metadata to pull in from our person field. So. We're going to come over here to Power App Studio. Uh, here is our SharePoint form that we had, but we're going to create a new form because we want to focus on that Dataverse table. And we're going to point this to our certification table. All right, so certification tracker from Dataverse is in recenter. And this time we actually want to use this email we're gonna do some funky business with it, but let's go ahead and keep that for now. And so what we really need to solve for is this name column. I don't want people just open-endedly typing their name. I need to collect that from a valid source that I have to give them some guardrails. Now, the very first thing we wanna do is we'll select the form and we're gonna add just one more piece of data and that's gonna be connectors. So in the search field, Office 365, and then choose from that Office 365 users. And that's the connector. That's gonna allow us to grab that data we need for our 365 users. Then we're gonna come over here to our card, our name card, data card two. And we're actually gonna insert a combo box. Unlock and add since that card is locked. At this point, we can go ahead and delete our data card value six since we won't be using that any longer. And we're gonna get this thing to scream at us quite a few times. It's not gonna like what we're doing here, but in the end, it's gonna be happy. All right, so if we start to run through some of these errors, we notice that a lot of them are arbitrary. So we can start pointing instead of data card value six, everything's gonna become that combo box one. So we're gonna use that often, bring that over here. All right. So let's click on the control itself here that we have the combo box control and make sure we're on items here. We're gonna add these simple lines here. So we're connecting to Office 365 users. We're doing a user search, limiting it to 50 and that's it. All right, so tuck that away there. Now let's dig into some more errors here, the update. We actually wanna update the combo box with the selected display name. So we're gonna go in here, combo box dot selected dot display name. That's what we're gonna be bringing in. So right now it's pretty happy. 
other than we notice this is a little off kilter here, let's just adjust. So the email field is at a position of 49. Let's go ahead and make that position 49 as well. And I am good with the way that looks. Make sure primary text and search field. This is not city. We want that display name. So we're just going to change that as well. All right, form selected. Notice the default mode again is not new. We want that to be new. And if we test that, we see. Ah, perfect. All right, so we got that going on. We also need to capture this email. So for this one, for the default value, we are just going to open this card up, unlock its properties, and we're gonna pop this one in here. So if we test this out again, boom, we've got the email in there as well. And now we can go on about our business and add our submit button. Give it a name, form three. All right, come back over to our table here. All right, and here we are. And now we have our entry from our Power App moving data over to Dataverse. Now, if you wanna clean this up the quick and dirty way, let's go ahead and click on your form, go to properties, go to fields, and you can move name because it doesn't really make sense to have email first when we're populating that from the name and then kick the email down to the bottom. Select your email card here, visibility, set that to false. And it's gone, gone, gone. Tighten that up and you're good to go. All right, so there you have it connecting to your 365 users list, plopping that down in Power Apps and connecting the dots over to Dataverse. Easy peasy. Until next time, get automating.